Are we here to practice cricket? Yes! In the second half, right? So why are we here? Outside, off the field, we say, right? So we're going to learn a few things today, off the field. No. Right? <laughs> you don't need a jacket. So thanks for everybody uh, joining us here. Uh, this this is something unique, something big, something huge in that sense. Is this was an idea when we started this academy? Was we will do few things which we struggle. Uh, as a journey, we, when we began, there were a lot of people who said, you can't do this. You're, you're in a new place, you're starting a career. Even when we were doing, preparing for engineering, you know, when you aim for the top school, it was always a lot of negativity around us. So, there were scenarios in my life where there was a lot of negativity, but you have a good people around you which keeps you motivated that things can be done. And that motivation, that confidence, that positivity, sometimes get things done which you don't even believe in, like today. Who knew that we will be family like this size, we have so much support and we will grow like this. We started with what, five, six kids. We keep repeating ourselves, but this gives me a lot of confidence that every unique thing we have tried, it brings really, really, really positive energy in the team. So this was one of the things which I personally talked to Sue when we were doing that we want to do something for the kids where they don't see that there is a lot of negativity, but we want to make sure that we have few people here who can bring that positive energy in the team. And that's what AC is all about. We try to, whenever something, some negative email comes, some negative message comes, we try to address it right away. Because that negativity sometimes is good to fix things, but we don't want to linger on it. We want to move on and feed each other the positivity so that we can go and do better things. To me, this is such still a start. Today we are working on the ground, the staff, the work has started, just begin on the ground to lay out the new pitches, to get cleaned up and all that. So it's, to me this is just a beginning and where people are thinking we have, we, we, have, we have gained a lot, we have reached a lot. So this is to me, this is a start. We got some uh, recognition uh, from the media, these were some of the meetings we did last year and they got recognized, they were following us, we didn't know. So some, certain, certain articles were written about us. To me, it's my name is written on it. It's just because I'm the face. I'm the one who went and did the talking. But this is this all goodness is happening because all of you. So, from my bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you to make this all happen. And I would really give a big lot of applause for this. <laughs> Nobody has time to write about anyone. Uh, these are these are the people we didn't even know. These are the people have no clue who they are, they just met us, they saw what we are doing and these are the articles, some of these things, you know, they get you going, saying, okay, we need to go do better things. So this is our first experiment with this uh, speaker series and uh, I think that played a big, huge role in my life, by, whether it's reading books uh, of this nature or listening to the people I, uh, I look up to. So hopefully this will give us a platform for the parents, for the kids. To, to to get moving in a forward direction. So anything we start, every event we start, we have a culture to say thanks, thanks to the team. So today I'll start saying thanks to a family who comes with a big smile. Doesn't matter the situation, the kids will always be smiling, the parents are always smiling, and they always bring their positivity. So this positivity theory and this positivity of the day, I'll we'll start with that, with that family of saying thanks. And if I can get Danu and show here, so I give it to them. Can you join us here? Abhi, can I show on the One second, I'm just to present this to a show, Kandan. thankful to a part of the ACA and you know I love all the kids here you know they work extremely hard 
every day and, and I guess like they are having fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for all your time, Mr. Kent. I love you, Goch. And uh, the second person I'm going to call, it's there are people who come in, they sit outside, they see how things are working, and you don't even know what, what they can bring on the table till you go and talk to them, connect with the parents. That's why we always say we are not an academy or a family where you drop a kid from the car and just go. We want everybody in. We want everybody to be included. So when we started having conversation, and uh, to me, when I started coaching, and I was coaching at uh, a different academy, MYCA before that, to me that, what that gave me was whether my kids were going for coaching or not, I enjoyed coaching. I, can, I enjoyed connecting with the kids. So I will attend the practice. I never miss a practice there and I'll go work hard as I do. Uh, and that was, to me, that was the uh, thing I was looking for. And I think we have a one person here who has started same thing, one family, whether the kids are participating or not, we always get the top class coaching and the commitment, and he handles over the toughest group. So, Cabrini, Tom, please. Yeah. Welcome here. years ago, I didn't know anything about this sport, but uh, through, through a bunch of different uh, things, uh, we got involved in, in this great sport, and we love it, uh, it's part of our life, and changed us for the better, and uh, thank you guys very much, and uh, enjoy being part of this group. I just think the one of the moms who's there for every game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> one of the very few moms. <laughs> possible without the support of all of you here. First of all, I want to big, give a big round of applause to all of you for being here. Chandala, you are this is our first maiden attempt to bring a change, meaning who would have thought, like Ajay said, to have a motivation speaking session for a cricket academy. It's not even in the radar, am I right? So we are trying to make a difference. Every single day we think of how to make a change. We are here to do that. And we are looking for a positive feedback from any one of you. If anything that we are missing, we are here to uh, listen and take care of it. And that's why we are here. And I want to thank Peter, who has been a great source of inspiration. He was behind us for all these planning activities. He's gracious enough to give his facility for us. So another round of applause for Peter. <laughs> and I'm going to introduce Mr. Robert Washington. And he has been gracious enough to come and give us a presentation. He is a veteran, military veteran. He is a trained uh, martial uh, uh, arts uh, <coughs> professional. And he's a dad. And he is a professional speaker. And he's one of the, these are the two of the, one of the best we can get in St. Louis to come and address all of us here. So we are so fortunate. We are so fortunate <coughs> to have you, Robert, here. Without further ado, I'm going to give it back to you, Robert. Let's give a few <laughs> Thank you for that gracious introduction. I wrote it myself. <laughs> Thank you, Peter, for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm blessed to be here. Such a great group of young, talented athletes. I'm an athlete. I'm a coach. I'm a parent. I got five boys, so <laughs> they all play sports. So we all have something in common, right? We're all in this room. We all have something in common. The biggest thing today I want to talk about is survival. And I consider myself a survivor. Who knows the definition of survival? You know the definition? Let's hear it. Let's hear it. People who are like, <coughs> alive mm -hmm. and they like, haven't died. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 that's the, the textbook dictionary, the dictionary um, of, of survivor is someone who has lived where others have died or fallen. My, de my definition of survivor is someone who has overcame something that someone else who hasn't. 
So myself, I'm a survivor. I feel like I'm a survivor. I think each one of us in this room are survivors because there's going to be moments <coughs> in our life where we're going to be hit with tough times when we have to survive that moment. And you know what the, the key word is moment. Moment means it's temporary. It's not here to break us, it's here to strengthen us. That's why I think I am a survivor. Myself, I'll tell you this little story. As a child, about, uh, let me show you a little picture real quick. But as a child, right here, look at that. <laughs> Who's that cute little boy? It's me. <laughs> so this is me. And this is the only picture I could find of me as a child. And as you can see, my auntie was actually, she, she cut it out and she took a picture of me because I have no images as a child. So that's the only living image of me as a child. During that moment, I was surviving. I feel like I was surviving. I'll tell you a quick little story. My mom and my dad was never a part of my life and my mom had to leave for about three months as a child. Uh, it was my older sister who was 14. I was 12 at the time and my younger brother was eight. So we lived in a house by ourselves for three months. We had no food. We had no uh, television. We had no iPhones, iPads. We didn't have that stuff. We didn't have a car. We had nothing. But we never knew we were struggling. You know why? Because we were surviving. And we knew it was just a moment in our life. And we just had to push through that moment. So like I said, a lot of times, we get here with hard times in our life, and we just have to push through that moment. And one, one of the ways I was able to push through, I just kept a big smile on my face. <laughs> Every day, I love my life, even during my toughest times. Just like you're having tough, tough times on the cricket field, you have to push through and just smile through those moments. And like I said, to, we're all connected in one way, right? It's, it's not a coincidence that we're all here in the same room at the same place at the same time. This is our journey. This is our destiny. We have to love and enjoy every moment of this journey, right? We have to love and enjoy, enjoy every moment. And the only fitting way to do that is with a smile. So I want everybody to take a deep breath and just smile. <sighs> and all the pain's away. <laughs> That's exactly what I did as a child. And you know what's so funny? I literally have to teach myself each and every day, Rob, just smile. Just love it. Because I, I honestly believe that we can, we can manifest, we can create positive energy towards us by just smiling and loving each moment of our day. So I have to create a habit in my life to smile and enjoy each moment of my journey. And one thing we have to do, we have to believe. We have to believe. I, like if, if I wanted to start and play, if I want to play cricket tomorrow, there's no way I can say, I hope I can play cricket tomorrow. I have to believe. I don't believe in hope. Who, who knows what hope is? Hope is. So for me, hope is like that gray area between believing and not believing. We all want to win on the cricket field, right? Yeah. We all want to win, right? Yeah. So yeah. in order for us to win, we have to believe. We have to believe that we can do it. We have to believe that our team or our teammates can do it. So me, I don't believe in hope. I believe we can, we have to, I believe in self-belief. Like each individual person in this room, we have to believe that we can get, get the job done. We have to believe that we can achieve greatness on a cricket field. If I was to throw, what's your name, young man? What is it? If I was to throw adding in the ball right now, the, the cricket ball, if I was to throw you the ball, the moment I let that ball out of my hand, Adnan has to believe that he can catch that ball, right? He can't hope, he and he can't hope, I hope I can't, you know, he has to believe. So that's kind of how life feels. Anytime we want to achieve anything, we have to, it starts with us believing. And we can't hope we can do it. We can hope other people, but for us, our own personal self, we have to believe. And I want to show you guys a, 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 a little skit real quick. It's a little story that I kind of came up with. And it talks about overcoming adversity and, and things like that. Because like I said earlier, we're going to go through tough times in school. We're going to go th through tough times on the cricket field. But we have to stay positive, and we have to believe that we can push through these tough times. You know, if we're having a bad day, we have to believe we can push through. So that was a story uh, about this chef and his chef daughter. Who all know? Who knows what a who's, who's a chef? A chef is a person who cooks, right? And does all the and this chef's daughter. So one day, this chef's daughter. She comes into the house one day and she's mad 
She's had a bad day. She has a bad day at school. She had a bad day at practice. Her and her friend got into an argument, so she's mad. She's mad. Who's who's been who's had a bad day before? Raise your hand. Everybody. We all have had bad days before, right? So she comes to the house and she talks to her dad. She's like, Dad, I'm having a bad day. So her dad, he just stands there and he listens, right? He just listens. And then eventually he says, you know what, it's time for me to cook dinner. So he heads into the kitchen. He grabs one egg, and I have a, I got some eggs and stuff I want to show you guys. I need a volunteer. Can I get one volunteer? Uh, any, many, my name, Mo. Right there. Wait, who? Come on. Me? Uh, in the blue, you, the blue Arna. jacket. Yes. What's your name? Arna. Arna. Let me get Arna to come up. <laughs> so, <don't worry. coughs> so, so the chef, he went, he went into the kitchen. And he grabbed, he went into the refrigerator, he got one egg and one potato, right? He grabbed the egg and potato, he placed the egg and potato in a pot of hot water. Now what happens when you put eggs and potato in a pot of hot water? You cook them, right? So he placed the egg and potato in a pot of hot water. Then he grabbed a cup and he dipped the cup into the pot of hot water and he made him a cup of coffee. What happens when you add water to coffee? What happens to the, what happens to the water? What happens? It turns black, right? It turns black. So he grabs the egg and potato and the coffee. And once it, when the egg and potato is done, he walks towards the table with his daughter. Remember his daughter was she was complaining about her day? She's like, oh, I'm having a bad day. She's complaining, she's complaining. So the dad grabs the egg and the potato and the coffee. He walks up to his daughter and he said, now this egg, this potato, and this coffee was cooked in the same hot water. What happens when you put a soft yolk egg into a pot of hot water? What happens? Anybody knows? It gets hard, right? So he said this egg, this potato, and this coffee is cooked in the same, same hot water. What happens when you put a, a potato in a pot of hot water? What happens to a potato? A hard potato, what happens to it? It gets soft, right? So he says, now, I put these all three in the hot water, so this egg, touch, I mean this potato, touch the potato, touch this, right? Feel it. What is it? Is it hard or soft? <laughs> Let's push it in. Push it in. Okay, what's this one? That's hard, right? So he puts this potato in the hot water. This potato that was once hard, it became soft. Now this egg. How's that? That's that's a regular egg. And feel this egg. You can't really. We're not gonna. We're not gonna crack the egg. <laughs> so but this egg's all burnt and stuff. It got put in the hot water. What happened again when we put the egg in the hot water? It becomes. <coughs> it becomes hard, right? Yeah. So this soft yolk egg became hard when he put it in the hot water. Now this water, now what happened to the water when we put the, the coffee in the hot water? What happened to it? Turned black. It turned black. So he looked at his daughter and said, now when you get hit with hard times, are you going to become too hard, like this potato, I mean too soft like the potato? See, the potato was once hard. It got put in the hot water and it became soft. Are you going to become too hard? Like this egg. So the egg was once soft and it got put in the hot water and it became hard. Or he said, are you going to transform like the coffee? Now what happened to the coffee? The, the coffee didn't let the hot water change it. What did it do? It changed the hot water. So well, like I said, when we get hit with tough times, we have to survive the hot water. Just like I had to survive, thank you. <laughs> Just like I had to survive my tough times as a child growing up. When we get into with tough times, we have to survive the hot water, right? We don't want to become too hard or get mad if our coach is to, uh, yelling instructions to us. We, we just have to survive that moment. We listen to our coach and we keep pushing. Or we don't want to quit. See, the, the potato the potato quit. The potato became soft and mushy. It became real soft and it quit. So when we get hit with tough times in our life, in our career, as a professional, as an athlete, or when we get bigger and become a professional, or you know, even at home, we have to just survive the hot water. Remember that. We always want to be the coffee. And with, with us being the coffee, and we're able to push through, then we're able to help each individual person. We're able to help our teammates. Who knows the, uh, who knows the geese? Everybody knows this, these geese that fly in the V formation? Yeah. Who's seen the geese that fly in the V formation? I've seen them. Everybody seen them? Now, does anybody know why geese fly in this V formation? You know why? Because it's easier. <laughs> anybody? Because it does. 
Because it does, it does. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they have them cut through there. Can I get another one? So, those are the back. Yeah, right, right. Look at all these great answers. We're going to keep going. Migration. I'm sorry? Migration. They get they get to their destination. Migration. One more. Let's go. No, he took yours? <laughs> I knew he took yours. <laughs> <laughs> but so these geese, so science has actually proven why these geese fly in this V formation. So these geese are able to fly in this V formation. And it's each geese flaps their wings, it creates an uplift for the bird behind. So they're able to fly 71% greater distance by flying in a V formation. Isn't that crazy? So they're working together. We see these, this V formation of geese, and they're working together as a team. We think they're just flying, but each person is working together with their teammate to get to their destination, to migrate to a warmer place, to a tropical beach somewhere. <laughs> so each person is doing that. So we can get a lot further in life as a team, as a cricket group, by staying together with our team. So we can, we can win those tournaments if we work together as a team. You know what's interesting? If a geese falls out of formation, what happens when, you, when you're doing something on your own? You mostly fail. It becomes hard. So when those geese fall out of formation, they feel the wind and, and the draft of trying to do it alone, and they, they, they quickly get back in formation to take advantage of that, that uplifting power from the geese in front. So anytime we're, we're, we, anytime we're working together, we can go a lot further. If we fall out of formation, jump right back in formation and work together as a team. And you know with the geese and the behind, you, you know when we see those geese, they're flying, and we hear those, those honk noise, you know what they're doing? What do you think they're honking for? Can I get, can I? Um, they're mad. They're mad, they, they could be mad. <laughs> they might be communicating. They're communicating, that's great. Anybody else? Well, you know what they communicate. They're sending messages to the geese in front to keep up the good work, keep pushing. So they're motivating each other. So what messages are we sending to our teammates when we're hunking from behind? What messages are we sending to our, our coaches? What messages are we motivating our teammates to keep pushing, keep going, you're doing a great job? What messages are we sending? And you know the most important part of it, about the whole scenario, I thought this was really interesting when I was reading it, that when a geese falls out of formation, or, or gets hurt and it, it gets injured, it falls to the ground and two other geese follows it to the ground to stay with it until that geese dies or until the geese uh, gets better. Only then would those two geese set out and catch another group or keep up with their, or catch up with their old group. So they, they're, it's, a, it's a teamwork. These geese are able to get a lot further by working together as a team. Like you all are a team. We're all a team here, right? If we work together and we communicate, if we survive those tough moments in our life, and believe in ourselves, we can get a lot further by working together as a team. <laughs> one last thing. And so, one last thing. I'm going to tell you guys a little story. As a child, over a three year time period, I became an expert at stumping aluminum cans. Who knows what aluminum cans are? The cans. Everybody knows it. See, I became an expert as a child at stumping these cans. At the young age of seven years old, most kids play games like hide and go seek. You guys all play hide and go seek? Yeah. Not me. Not, much. Not me. I didn't play hide and go seek. I played stump a can until it could barely be seen. So we stumped these cans. See, my stepfather and I, we had to go. We had to find and we had to collect and we had to stump as many aluminum cans as we could. And we placed them in these big black trash bags. We load them up on the shopping cart and we pushed them to the recycle center for cash. That sounds easy, right? Does it sound easy? No. <laughs> it wasn't. Like sometimes I felt like these cans was playing hide and go seek. You can't find me. <laughs> when you all get home today, I want you to dig in your trash can. I want you to find as many aluminum cans as you could. <laughs> that is so I'm joking. Hey, trust me. It's not a lot there. Trust me on this. I've done the research, years and years of research. There's not a lot there. See, my family's livelihood depended on these aluminum cans. I was poor growing up. Milk, 
eggs, bread, and if I was really, really lucky, sometimes even ice cream, depending on collecting his cans. Who likes ice cream? <coughs> so I knew I had to collect cans to get my ice cream. <laughs> so one day I said, you know what? I'm going to increase my chances of getting my ice cream. So you know what I did? Me and my stepfather, we would go and we would look for these cans and we'd collect them. He would turn his back, I would add a rock to the can. He would turn his back again, I would add another rock. And I kept doing it because I knew the only way I was going to be able to get my ice cream is if these cans was heavy. Heavy cans equals more weight equals what? More, more money. money when I took it to Recycle Center. Great idea, right? Yeah. Wrong. Not wrong. Not wrong. My stepfather in the recycling center, man, they quickly found my trick, and they started shaking the cans. Have you, how, have you all ever been in this situation no. where, where you knew you was going to get in trouble when you got home? Man, I was like, whoa, this is a terrible feeling. All I can say, back then we had these big wooden paddles, like those sticks, like your bats. Those things was legal. <laughs> those things was legal. But you know what? I learned a valuable lesson for that. Never add the unnecessary rocks, this unnecessary weight to our <coughs> dreams, to our cans of dreams. Never cheat on your dreams. You'll never win. And I cheated, and guess what I got? I got a spanking. <laughs> and no ice cream. <laughs> I like that. And no ice cream. <laughs> and you know, who, who knows the shopping course? It's the shopping course you get from Walmart. We all know the shopping course, right? So whoever invented the shopping cart, I want to thank you. Does anybody out there know the person that invented the shopping cart? Nobody? I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Because I can imagine having to carry these bags and bags of aluminum cans for miles and miles and miles by hand. I can't even imagine. See, we tied these bags of aluminum cans to the, on the shopping cart and we pushed them to the recycling center, and we didn't stop pushing until we hit our goals. I was laughed at by other kids. You can laugh at me, but I'm going to get my ice cream, I said in my head, and I didn't stop pushing until I hit my goals, until I hit my destination. See these cans? These cans represented my dreams as a child, and I had to stump towards my dreams. I crushed them down to size, and I put them into these big black bags. See, sometimes our dreams might be too big for others to see, but if we keep stumping towards our dreams, then soon others will believe. And then I tied these bags of my dreams on the shopping cart, and I pushed it to the recycling center until I hit my goals, until I hit my destination. So you guys, stump towards your dreams, and don't stop pushing until you hit your goals, until you hit your destination. <coughs> and one last thing. You said earlier, <laughs> what you say? Don't cheat and add rocks to your dreams, because what? You'll never get the ice cream. <laughs> so in that story, the shopping cart, for you guys, the shopping cart was that vehicle that pushes you. It's your, the shopping cart is your coach, your mom, your supporter. That's that person that's going to push you to help you get to your goal. So we have to listen to our coaches, right? The rocks. The rocks was the negative things. I added those extra weights to my cans of dreams to try to get above, to try to get ahead. I cheated on my dreams. And then I got a spanking. I didn't get my ice cream. <laughs> and the, uh, the shopping cart and the, the, my can, my cans, those were my dreams. Those were my livelihood. I couldn't eat. I couldn't live another day if I didn't collect these cans. So I had to collect these cans. These cans were my dreams. <laughs> And guess what? The ice cream was the prize. It was the prize at the end. Once we worked so hard at our goals, we worked so hard on the cricket field inside the classroom, we have that prize that's waiting for me. The ice cream was my prize. So that's a little bit about myself. Go a little bit further. So remember, if we want to win, we must become survivors. We must learn to believe in ourselves and we have to become survivors of these tough moments. As you all are young, you're going to have plenty of tough moments. But remember, a moment is just temporary. It's not there to break you. It's there to strengthen you. So love, number one, love and enjoy every moment of your journey. I don't believe in setbacks. I think setbacks are actually setups. <coughs> once, you do, once you're doing the right thing and you're positive towards what you're doing, 
There's no such thing as setbacks. Setbacks is a setup for something greater. So we, we have to survive that moment. We work as a team and we win as a, we win, we win as a team. You all work, remember those, those, those geese? They was working together as a team and they made it to their destination because they worked together as a team. And lastly, we have to stump towards our dreams. Just like I stumped those cans and put them on, in a bag and pushed them towards the shopping court, pushed them with the shopping court towards the recycling center, we have to stump towards your dreams. And at the end, our prize is waiting for us. So if I didn't survive all these moments, I wouldn't have been able to do this. So I was able to travel the world and fight and compete all across the world because I kept stumping towards my dreams. And when my career as, as, as a fighter ended, now this is my dream, being able to talk to you guys and inspire you. So if I would have quit in that process, I wouldn't have made it here. So I kept pushing. I survived each one of my moments, and my, my setbacks became set-ups for something greater. So thank you guys. Thanks for having me. I think you can all agree that um, Robert's stories are an inspiration, aren't they? I mean, all those stories about the cans and the geese and the, the coffee and to see him up here having, having fought towards his dreams. Who would have thought that that little kid in shoes that were too big for him? Okay, the one photo, a family that was so poor that he had to crush cans so that he could have bread and milk to be able to travel the world as an MMA fighter to fight for his country. We didn't tell you that two weeks after 9-11, this man joined the forces. He was so inspired to go and protect the people of this country. And now, his dream is to make a difference in the lives of, of, of different people. From little ones, to medium-sized ones, and then Robert does some great work with corporations as well, helping corporations and teams work towards their dreams as a team. So I want to introduce you quickly. Izzy doesn't know that this is happening here, but Izzy, come on, come here. So just five more minutes, and then, then um, Tane will take you guys. Maybe we can just pout here, Tane. Okay. Tane, Tane will take you outside, and you can go and run around and get some fresh air. So Izzy was a student at the school two, two, one year ago. Two years, maybe one year ago. So Izzy came to me once, and she said, you know, Mr. Dry, because that's what they call me. Mr. Dry, I don't, I don't know if I want to go to college. I'm like, what? Like, everyone goes to college. Like, no one ever, you know, everyone goes to college. She says, I don't, I don't think I want to do it. I've got different dreams. So, oh, okay. So, well, Izzy, you go, just go and think about it. But, you know, maybe, maybe do college and, and work your dream elsewhere. She came back to me again. Mr. Dry, you know, I've got a different dream. I said, do you know that every single kid at this school is going to go to college? She said, I don't know. She doesn't care. I've got a dream. Her dream, and when you when you look at it, you can't believe it, but trust me, just standing here feeling these muscles, you know. <laughs> Izzy's dream was to become an MMA fighter, a mixed martial arts fighter. Guess what she is? She's an MMA fighter. so hard, and a lot of thanks goes to this man I know, but she worked so hard and had such strong belief in herself and people around her who believed in her, that I don't think you've lost a fight yet. Have you? One fight at the very beginning, and since then? Nothing. Okay. March 24th, if you're 18 and above, you can come and watch Izzy. <laughs> um, but Izzy sends me pictures of the, of the other girls that she defeats, and, and they don't look too happy. <laughs> um, and we're very proud of Izzy, and we're particularly proud, not so much, I mean, we love the fact that she's won, but the fact that she was willing to follow her dreams, find the right people around her to help her move towards those dreams, and to work so darn hard for it. So. Thanks for coming along. Robert, that was outstanding again, and uh, really, really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so, okay, sorry.
Thank you so much, Robert, for coming and helping us out here. It was really, really nice. As a token of appreciation, we have something for you. And may I call Mr. Bibu Grover on stage, please? <laughs> Thanks, Robert. It's, your stories are inspirational, and I have something for you. And Vibhu has been in our journey, in our cricketing journey, for, from the day it started. He is one of the community leader who is shaping up, uh, stepping up for all the occasions here. And if any one of you have not uh, noticed Vibhu, he is uh, one of our main sponsors who has supported in all our attempts, every single attempt. He was quite financial. He is the one. If you need any loans, anything, <laughs> please. He's not even saying, so we have to say it so, all the time. <laughs> it's okay to get from someone else, but he should be a first call. <laughs> At least I'm going to request that he becomes your first call to him. Maybe he's going to find you one. If he, I think yeah, you have a latest Adam, right? If you find something better, you're going to beat it. Yes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so he's going to definitely beat it. If you bring another thing that he, someone is better, he's going to beat it by $500 or so. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Robert. Thank you guys. I really appreciate you. Thank 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 you.